This is Emmett. He's the fleshy one, not the skeleton. That is Emmett's friend and bodyguard. He is known only as Skelly, because that is his name. It's true, he just stands there in the corner, but that's all he really needs to do. Emmett is an averagely peculiar chap with a propensity for making fake lethal objects out of random crap lying around the house. He also makes action figures. Lots and lots of action figures. Oh wow, there's a fourth one. Last I checked, there was only three. Somebody's gonna need more shelf space. And there's even more in the basement. Holy crap. I guess when you've been doing a thing for eight years, you accumulate a lot of those things. January 5, 2019. Emmett posts his first video. When I first started this whole thing, I told myself I wasn't going to try and chase after popularity. I didn't think it was going to be that hard, because I wasn't really expecting to get that popular anyway. His expectations were subverted, however, when he put out his sixth video, an episode of Missions to Make Stuff, where he makes a sword based off of the Netflix animated children's series, Troll Hunters, as well as subsequent spinoffs. This video, as the kids say, blew up. Hmm, I'm not sure if that's exactly blowing up. At least not like a rapid explosion. What does thermite do? Does it blow up or does it just sizzle? Whatever you call it, that's what it did. It sizzled and sizzled and legends say it sizzles to this very day. Climbing well above any of the closest contenders on Emmett's channel. Except for Baby Yoda, that dude's catching fire. And with this popularity came many comments. Please make a homemade shadow staff. Can you make the shadow staff? Can you make the shadow staff from Troll Hunters, please? At first I didn't want to respond just because people wanted me to, but then I got so many that I can do this. And for some reason that makes me feel legit. It's called a requested video. It means you've got fans. Welcome to the big league, son. Well, here it is, the shadow staff, or at least what will be the shadow staff. So, I've already taken multiple pieces of pipe, warmed them up, and bent them in the shape. The first thing is just to glue them together. Here, Emmett makes his first mistake. He did not check the direction of the twist when he glued the two together. It's just like the sayings of old. Be careful what you stick together, because it just may stay that way. Ah! Oh, no, oh, never mind. I guess it's like that other saying of old. Any problem can be solved if you just yank on it hard enough. Heh, <laughs> I had some masking tape wrapped around there to for filler. Um, and the tape is still glued in there. I just ripped a layer of masking tape right off the end. There. It goes in like that. I had it go in like that. So now that it's all put together, I need to figure out how to make the crystallized look of it. My first thought was to glue cardboard and craft foam together to make each face an individual piece. What makes this complicated is that the facets are layered, almost telescoped. But they don't all just go in the same direction, oh no, they switch it up a few times. They say one thing, they do the other. It's not just a simple glue on pieces of foam situation, I need to plan out which ones overlap. So he starts at the bottom, but as he glues on each individual face, he quickly encounters an issue. It didn't look great. It's actually pretty messy. I was expecting this to be the more tedious route, but I was also expecting to have more control over how it looked. Plus, I wanted it to have sharp corners and smooth sides. And at the time, I thought this was the best way of doing that. Eventually, he decides that this method just doesn't work. So now it's his turn to switch things up. Moving forward, he wraps the pipe in a piece of floor mat foam and carves down the sides and uses a Dremel to clean up the surface. First, he has to sand down the texture on the floor mat. When he cuts out the piece, he also warms it up with a heat gun to make it all soft and squishy. Malleable, you might say. Well, they get malleated, mal, 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 molded, and slapped on there with contact cement. Mm -hmm. 
Contact cement is a tricky thing. You put it on both sides and wait for it to dry. Yeah, I'm still figuring out the timing, but the only difference it really makes is how long you have to hold the pieces together. Sometimes the pieces pull apart, but he just fills it in with hot glue or something of that ilk. It was actually kind of hard for me to decide which weapon I wanted to go with. Watching Wizards, I was liking Merlin's staff, Duxie's staff, Warhammer, Toothache, and Excalibur. Although, with that one, if I was to make it, I think I might have to redesign a few things. Like, if it's a two-handed sword, why is the blade so stubby? And what is with that cross guard? This is the face of a man who's been watching too much adversity. My version didn't end up quite as bendy as the picture looks, but I'm happy with it. Now he plays with his creation. It may seem like an innocent enough activity, but as time goes on he discovers that the Shadow Staff wobbles. Yeah, it's a little wiggly. Oh well. This could have been solved by using a bigger piece of pipe, but what's done is done. Best not to dwell on it. Now it is time for the handle. He uses tin foil and duct tape to get a pattern. And then he makes it out of foam. Hmm, that thing looks sort of like a corset. Or maybe a little mini shin guard. Hmm, yeah. 
I made the prototype to make sure the size was right, but then I realized that there are panel lines on the handle, so I really should cut the pieces of the foam to match the pieces of the handle so that the seams match the lines. That way I don't have to clean up the seams after the fact. Unfortunately, this pattern is more complicated and doesn't go together as cleanly. Spacers are necessary to fill gaps. When the fabrication is complete, he uses quick seal to fill the cracks and smooth out the seams. He even sprays part of it with flex seal. That's right, liquid rubber in a can. I saw it in the hardware store and I was like, they have it! I've been experimenting with it as an alternative to Plastidip, and it is not an alternative to Plastidip. In essence, it's the same thing, spray on rubber. The one pro is I can find it locally, but it sprays on kind of lumpy. It does do a good job to fill gaps and even things out, but you have to spray it on really thick. Afterwards, Emmett realized he forgot a few touches on the handle. Namely, an extra strip on the bottom, and runes on the back. I couldn't see the runes very clearly on the handle, but when I looked up pictures of the runes themselves, I found a code chart that showed how the runes relate to our own alphabet. So I picked out the runes that spell Emmet, and I carved those into the foam. If you hit cuts in foam with a heat gun, the foam contracts, and that opens the cuts. And now it's time for the long, arduous, but fun process of painting. To seal the foam, he coats it in contact cement. But this cement does not get cemented to anything, nor does the contact come in contact with anything. It only soaks into the foam and dries, creating a smooth-ish surface. Next, Emmett went to spray it with some gloss black paint, but he discovered that he had none. I didn't really want to go to the store, so I just used what I had. I grabbed some blue just to use as like a base coat, but then I realized I could get a head start on the kind of multicolored look of the thing by spraying on various colors of spray paint. The steps are as follows. Coat it in blue. Platter it with red, silver, and what's left of the black primer. Take it inside and work black craft paint down into the cracks of the sections. Give it a couple coats of Mod Podge. Dry brush white onto the edges. Use a nifty little thing called Color Shift Paint. The Color Shift didn't work out as cleanly as I'd hoped. On the bottle, it looks blue, but then it shimmers purple. Putting it on the prop, it just looked like shiny purple. I did discover that adding black made it more purple, and adding Mod Podge made it more blue. So, I acted accordingly. Tweak the purple so that it looks more shifty. Dry brush some black on. Seal it. Dry brush some pink after being inspired by these rocks. Now they're mineral! And finally, dry brush some white very selectively onto only the edges. And now for the handle. Cover the whole thing in an even black. Dry brush some gold to give it warmth. Cover the whole thing in a thin silver. Seal it. Dry brush some white on the highlights. And then guess what, boy? You be done. And it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. This is what's called the post-project dance-off. It's a phenomenon that occurs when things go so well you decide to dance like nobody is watching. And like you did not just hit the record button. It may seem silly, but by owning up to your own silliness, you can turn it into humor. You dancing fool! Enough dancing! So there you go. I did it. And I'm glad I did, too. This was a lot of fun. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to pull off the paint job, but I actually like it. Normally when I go overboard with adding a lot of color and detail, I end up not feeling like I can see it all. But actually I can here. Like, I can, I can see almost every layer. It does add to the crystal-like quality. So yeah, I'm very pleased. And I hope that you are, too. Thank you for watching, and good luck with your own crafting adventures. Thus concludes our glimpse further into the mind of Emmett. Do you ever feel like you can hear voices? It's a narration. Do you mind?
Well, I mean, no, I guess not. Saved me the trouble of explaining things. See, it's like I always say, people wouldn't mind hearing voices if those voices sounded like Morgan Freeman. Somebody back at the office owes me 20 bucks. But you don't actually sound that much like Morgan Freeman. Well, crap. Now I owe somebody back at the office 20 bucks. Okay.